Hello everyone. All right, here we go with our pedigree notes. Hopefully you have your notes handout available um, so that you can fill that out as we go through. Let's see how we do. All right, so a pedigree uh, is basically a way of tracking uh, relationships in a family. Um, we use symbols to represent people and we connect the people with lines to show marriages or matings at least and um, offsprings or children. Um, a lot of times pedigrees are used to uh, determine what's called the mode of inheritance. That means um, tracking the way a trait is inherited from one generation to the next. All right, so that's what mode of inheritance means. Um, you can use this for traits like, you know, male pattern baldness or for genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis. All right, so that's the purpose of a pedigree is to, uh, to determine and track the mode of inheritance of a trait. All right, so you may have been introduced to this before. I'm not sure. I think some schools are doing this in, in, uh, in uh, middle school before. So uh, anyway, maybe you've seen pedigrees before. We have boxes and we have circles. So we have boxes and circles. We represent people with these symbols. So squares uh, represent males. So this would represent a male. Uh, circles represent females. Um, we connect the two of them with uh, a, a line. A horizontal line that shows that these two people are mating or having children together um, and then a vertical line takes you down from one generation to the next generation so here are these two circles are the offspring of this couple this man and this woman okay um, so that's how we represent the children so this man and this woman have two children two females um, and that's how we represent them um, in general, with a pedigree, uh, the oldest people or the oldest organisms, because we can use this for other than humans, of course, the oldest organisms are found at the top of the pedigree and they get younger as you move down the pedigree. Um, so the shading is probably the most uh, telling part of a pedigree. So um, we shade the symbol of an individual that possesses or suffers from or has whatever trait we're trying to track. And so if you shade in like this, this woman right here is shaded in, her symbol is dark. That means she has the trait or possesses the characteristic or suffers from the disease or whatever it is that we're tracking. And her, while the, this man here does not, his symbol is unshaded, so he doesn't have the trait. She does have the trait. And in their children, one of their daughters does have the trait and the other one does not. All right. Now, sometimes when you're, um, making a pedigree and you have many generations uh, for example to track uh, you might want to keep track of how many people died from the trait sometimes the trait that you're tracking is is a fatal one um, and if uh, you know but sometimes it's not like if you're tracking male pattern baldness that's not something that anyone dies from however if you're tracking a trait like cystic fibrosis that can kill people that people die from that and so you show that on a pedigree by putting a slash through the symbol of a person who dies from whatever we're tracking. So obviously you only use a slash like this if you're tracking a trait that can kill you. Um, and you only put a slash through a person who has died from that trait. Okay, so if an individual died due to the trait, you put a slash through their symbol. Good so far? Pretty straightforward, right? All right, we need to touch base a little bit on that idea of a trait that can kill you. So we call those lethal alleles. Basically, a lethal allele is something that can kill you if you're a homozygote. Um, so uh, alleles that cause an organism to die only when they're homozygous. Those are lethal alleles. Um, usually this is some kind of essential gene um, and you've got a bad, couple bad versions of it and it kills you off. So um, uh, a, 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 an example of a dominant inheritance lethal allele is Huntington's disease. If you have uh, at least one dominant allele of the of your two with Huntington's disease uh, for the Huntington's gene you'll, you'll you die from Huntington's um, and it only takes one uh, if it's a recessive uh, uh, inherited trait like cystic fibrosis you need two bad copies of the gene you need two um, alleles two recessive alleles um, and then you suffer from cystic fibrosis all right so uh, yeah there's those are two examples of lethal alleles so, like I mentioned a couple minutes ago, the purpose, or one of the purposes of making um, 
uh, pedigrees and using pedigrees is to to track how uh, traits are inherited across generations that's that's called the mode of inheritance so we want to figure out we use pedigrees to figure out how a given trait is inherited is it a dominant trait is it a recessive trait we can answer that question with pedigrees so let's do that by looking at some examples here's an example of a pedigree um, uh, where uh, it's a dominant uh, trait and I'm, I need to take a quick moment to talk about this word autosomal. It's come up in the past, but you might have forgotten it or might not remember or whatever. Um, you can characterize your chromosomes in two ways. They're either autosomes or they're sex chromosomes. Uh, the X and the Y are sex chromosomes. All of your other chromosomes are called autosomes. And so when I say we're talking about an autosomal disease, um, that just means that it's a, a trait or a disease or a characteristic that's carried on one of the non-sex chromosomes. Okay, so that's what autosomal means. Um, and so let's look at an example of where um, the trait that we're tracking is dominant and it's carried on an autosomal chromosome like this. All right. So um, as always in a pedigree, shaded individuals have the trait, suffer from the trait, have the disease, whatever. If, like is in this example, if the disease we're talking about or the, uh, the, the trait that we're talking about is dominant, then the shaded individuals must have one dominant allele, one capital letter. All right, so that's this example right here. We have this male, um, he, his symbol is shaded in, and he's must, so he must have at least one big uh, capital T. Um, we, um, and then if this is a dominant trait, the unshaded individuals, those who do not suffer from or have the trait, they must be homozygous recessive because they don't show the trait. They're not shaded in, and therefore they must have two recessive alleles. Okay, we can see these examples here. So unshaded individuals do not have whatever the trait is. They must be homozygous recessive. Typically, uh, for not always, but typically with an autosomal dominant disease or trait, you'll see that um, that trait the shaded individuals will show up in every generation like they do here we have one in this generation and we have a person suffering in this generation so that's a characteristic a typical characteristic of an autosomal dominant disease or trait all right so that's autosomal dominant uh, another example might be autosomal recessive so in this case um, shaded individuals like this woman right here have the disease that's always what shading means. That means, and they must be homozygous recessive because it's a recessive disease. Un unshaded individuals do not have the trait and they must have at least one dominant allele. All right, so in this case, we um, can look at this shaded individual and know that she must, if it's recessive, if this example is recessive um, inheritance, then this shaded individual must have two little t's and because she shows the trait, her, her symbol is shaded in, she has the trait, therefore, if it's a recessive trait, she must be little t, little t. And we can figure out that the parents, her mom and dad, must each have a little t in order for the child to have two little t's. Mom will donate a little t to this daughter, and dad must have donated a little t to this daughter to give her two little t's, and she thus has the trait. But mom does not suffer from the trait. She's not shaded in, so she must not be homozygous recessive. Therefore, we know mom has a big T and a little T. Same thing for dad. Um, with this son, we can't tell what his complete genotype is because um, we know he does not suffer from the trait. And since in this example, we're talking about recessive, um, he must have one big T because if he had two little T's, he would be shaded in and suffer from the trait. He's not shaded in, he doesn't suffer from the trait, so he must have at least one big T. But we don't know what his second allele is. He could have gotten a big T from mom and a little T from dad, or two big Ts, one from mom and one from dad. So sometimes in a genotype, I'm sorry, in a pedigree, you can't determine every genotype perfectly. Sometimes you just have a question mark and you can't do any better than that. Okay, the other thing with autosomal recessive example is that the traits usually show up every other generation. Not always, but usually um, they will skip generations. 
like we have here. All right, so let's look at a quick practice here. Um, here is a pedigree, and I want you to try and figure out, is this pedigree for a dominant or recessive trait? And then figure out the genotypes of each individual. You'll have to draw this on your handout because I don't think it's on your handout. Okay, so pause for a sec and try to figure this out and then I'll walk through it. All right, um, so here's how I would walk through this. I would look at this and say, well, let me get my writing utensil here. So um, let we don't know for sure whether it's dominant or recessive. We're going to have to kind of use logic to figure it out. Let's start out by assuming it's a dominant trait because that's the first one on the list here. So if this is a dominant trait, that means that any person who shows the trait must have one dominant allele. Uh, let's use T. So each any, any individual who shows the trait must have a big T, right? Because we're assuming for our, our uh, first kind of what if case here, what if this is dominant? Well, that means this shaded individual must have a big T. Um, what does that tell us about this person's parents? Well, if this male received a big T, that must mean one of his parents gave him a big T, all right? But if this is a dominant trait, then having a big T, right, would mean you have the trait. And this person or this would have needed to be shaded in. Neither of his parents is shaded in, so neither of his parents would have a dominant allele. And so that means that this doesn't work, right? So if you try to make this genotype, this pedigree work um, by assuming this shaded individual uh, uh, um, must have one dominant allele, uh, it doesn't work because his parents don't have a dominant allele to contribute. So our initial assumption that, that this might be a dominant the inherited trait is wrong. This must be a recessive inherited trait. So let's try again. Let's now assume this is a recessive trait. What do we know about recessive traits? Well, we know that anyone who is shaded in and has the trait must be homozygous recessive. That's how recessive traits work. So this guy must be little t, little t. All right, those are t's. If this child, this son, is little t, little t, that means he got a little t from each parent. All right, so ma, each mom, each of them, mom and dad, each must have a little t. Okay, because they, this child ended up with two little t's. That's the only way he could end up with two. However, we know that mom and dad do not suffer from this trait or, or show this trait, which means that they aren't homozygous recessive. They must have a big T, okay? Because mom does not show the trait. She ha must have a big T. Dad must have a big T because he doesn't show the trait. So we know what their genotypes are. Remember, we're trying to find the genotypes, all right? Okay, so we got those guys nailed, and so far, so good. What do we know about these two daughters? Well, they're not shaded in, which means they are not homozygous recessive, so they must have at least one big T. Okay. Now, do they have another big T or a, or a little T? Who knows? We can't tell because, uh, so these, this is going to be <laughs> question mark, and this is going to be question mark because if they, they uh, could have received a lowercase t, a little t from one parent or or a, an uppercase t, a, a big t from one parent. Um, all we know is that they have one big t and the other allele we don't know. So this is as far as we can take this particular example. Okay, excellent. So practice number one is done. Let's look at practice number two. We're going to do the same kind of thing. Here's a new pedigree. We want to figure out, is it dominant or recessive? And give a genotype for each individual. All right, so I will walk through it. Remember, when you see shading, that means the person suffers from or shows the trait. In this case, that means this person shows the trait, this person shows the trait, this person shows the trait. Let's walk through our example by starting off assuming that it's dominant and seeing if we can make the pedigree work out. If it's dominant, that means this person has to have a big T. Actually, it means that anybody who shows the trait must have at least one 
dominant allele. And I keep using T because it's easy to draw with the mouse. So each of these shaded individuals has to have a big T. What do we know about the people who do not who are not shaded there? We have two um, children here, this boy and this girl, who do not show the trait. They are not shaded, which if this is a dominant trait means they are little t, little t, right? Because if one of their alleles was a big T, they would be showing the trait. They are not shaded in, they do not show the trait, and therefore they must be little t, little t, okay? So now let's work a little bit backwards. If we know that these children are little t, little t, where did the little t's come from? Well, we must have gotten one from mom and one from dad. No other way this could work. All right, so we can tell that mom is a big T, little t, and if this is a dominant trait, that means mom suffers from the trait. Dad is big T, little t, because that dominant allele means he's shaded in, he suffers from the trait, but he has to have a little t to hand off to these children. What about this kid over here, this son? How much more can we figure out about him? Well, nothing. We don't know if he's big T, big t, or big T, little t. Either way, he's going to suffer from the trait. So he is big T question mark. There you go. All right, so that's the end of our note conversation about uh, pedigrees. We'll be doing a pedigree uh, worksheet tomorrow in class. So um, bring your notes and be ready for that tomorrow. Thanks for watching.